This is Behind the Headlines with behind-the-scenes analysis on issues affecting Pennsylvanians, sponsored by the Susquehanna Valley Center for Public Policy. Now, here's your host. Hi, welcome back to Behind the Headlines. Uh, Mara and I in this segment are joined by Rick Rogers. Rick, you are the president of Rogers & Associates uh, out of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Uh, can you tell us what does Roger and Associates do? Thank you for having me back. Uh, We're a wealth management firm, so we primarily work with individuals and we become their chief financial officer, helping them make smart decisions about money, anything that has to do with money, uh, investments, taxes, estate planning, should I buy a car or rent a car? So. Uh, oh, just working with individuals. I need to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I, uh, can you can you be unwealthy and still talk to you? Well, we do have a <laughs> we do have a minimum, okay. and so there's okay. a minimum account size okay. that we work with. Uh, but uh, but we're certainly are help, happy to help people make smart decisions. Well, and, and I do think whatever. I think uh, your new book is going to be great. Um, Don't retire broke and helping the average person. Um, really be successful uh, in retirement. So we're really excited to talk about that today. This book is uh, perfectly timed for people in my generation, the boomers who are starting mm -hmm. to think about retirement and some of us uh, to enter into it. So this would be a, a godsend for, for so many of uh, so many boomers. Yeah, and I think it takes a different perspective of retirement because mostly when people are thinking about retirement or planning for retirement, they're trying to accumulate a certain amount of money. So I need X amount of money. There was a famous book uh, that came out about the number that you have to get to this number and then, right. and then you can be retired. Well, that certainly is part of it. So how much uh, that you accumulate is part of it. Uh, how much you're going to spend is certainly another part of the equation. This book fa focuses on the after-tax aspects of it. So that number doesn't need to be as big if it's not going to be, the whole thing's going to be subject to tax. So how do we do it tax efficiently so that we don't have to save as much because when we're actually are retired that we're going to be in a lower tax bracket. Well, so what's the most important thing that people should do to avoid retiring broke? What, oh, what's well, the number one thing? I, I don't think we have enough time to go through all of it. <laughs> but, but the number one thing, I, I actually get that uh, asked that a lot and I think probably the most important thing is to start early. So time, get time on your side, start thinking about it. It's difficult for people who are in their 20s or 30s to think about retirement because the perception is that retirement is for old people or that I've got plenty of time to do that and get around to it. And the sad part of that is that if you wait until you're 50, you don't have much time for your money to compound, so there's a lot more pressure on actually saving. So getting uh, started early, and if it helps those 20 and 30-somethings, Think of it as financial independence, not think of it as retirement. So I want to get financially independent because we can all get excited about being financially independent. I want to be financially independent as soon as possible. And to get there, we start early we, and we do it consistently. Could it mean retiring a little bit earlier if you start early enough? Or do you still have to play <laughs> by those rules? Well, it could be retiring earlier. And this book will certainly help with that mm -hmm. because there's penalties for taking money out of uh, retirement right. accounts too soon. And so if your objective is to be able to be financially independent at 50, we can't have everything put into a 401k or an IRA and then be restricted on how we take the money out or be penalized for taking it oh, out. Okay. Well, in the last couple of years, the IRS has had more than their uh, share of press attention. Rick, right. uh, does the IRS really have a bullseye on our retirement assets? Oh, I think they absolutely do. You think huh. about how much money is Shocking. in retirement accounts, <laughs> but uh, it's trillions. There's trillions of dollars that is stuffed away in retirement accounts, and so those are all untaxed assets. So how can we get at, from the IRS perspective, how do we get at that money sooner or penalize? Uh, I know that uh, former President Obama had, had several uh, ideas about how to uh, put a cap on how much money could be saved in there and penalize you if you saved more than that. So there's always thoughts about how to get at this money and get at it sooner. And is this book going to help people try to help to avoid some of that then? <laughs> well, it is. And the well, we think of, um, whenever we think of investments, you always think of diversification. Like what, what is the number one rule for investing? You, well, you need to diversify. You don't put all your money in one stock. You don't put it all in stocks, bonds, and so forth. You diversify. The same applies to planning for retirement. We need to diversify. 
We want money saved in 401ks and IRAs, but that's all going to be taxed when it comes out. We want money saved after tax because we've already paid tax on that and that's easily accessible. There's no penalties for getting to it. And we want money saved tax-free in Roth IRAs. And if we diversify over all three of those, no matter what happens with the tax code in the future, we can determine what our tax bracket is by how much we take from each one of the accounts. Taking more from the Roth to minimize taxes, taking more from the 401k if we happen to be in a low tax year. So it really covers your bases and it's, uh, uh, it's I think, the only way that we should prepare for an uncertain tax future. Well, Rick, if you're just looking at this year, what would be the most important thing to do this year to prepare for retirement? If you're going to retire, so again, that kind of depends, but let me uh, walk you through my thought process. So if I'm going to retire next year, the most important thing you should do this year is live on your budget. So whatever you've determined that is going to be my, my spending when I retire next year, whatever that dollar amount is, let's live on it this year. Because if you find you can't live on that budget this year, then there's no sense in retiring yeah. next year. I have friends <laughs> who are doing that. That really is great advice because they it sort of prepares you in advance for what life is going to be going to be like. At right. That point. Mm -hmm. So when I um, years ago heard about the three-legged stool for retirement, mm -hmm. and um, I, I don't remember what it is, but can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> there's a new three-legged stool. Right. So can you tell us what the old three-legged stool is for preparing for retirement, and now what the new one should be? Well, back in the 70s, it was theorized. Is that when it, that's no wonder I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it was theorized because <clears throat> in the 70s is when you had ERISA, which protected pensions, and okay. pensions was one leg of the old stool. Uh, COLAs were added to Social Security. Before that, it had to be voted on to have an increase, and I think it was 74 or something like that that they put automatic increases in it, and then personal savings. So those were your original three legs. Well, uh, pensions are, unless you work uh, for the public sector, they're, they're pretty much gone, and they're going to have to be modified significantly for those that are around to stay around. Uh, Social Security is wobbly, and that's going to have to be adjusted if that's going to be sustainable. And so now we're back to a new three legs, which is your tax-deferred accounts, your 401k and IRAs, your tax-free account, your Roth and Roth 401k, and your after-tax account. And so that's the new three legs that we should be building in order to have a secure retirement. Okay, well, very, very interesting. What makes this new three-legged stool so efficient in today's economy? Well, I think two things. One, it's not dependent on somebody else. It's dependent on you. So you build these three legs. So nobody, uh, well, Social Security could be changed by future legislations. Uh, pensions could be modified. Uh, even if they can't be modified, the company could go bankrupt. And so what's, uh, what could your pension? And then now you're back to relying on the pension benefit guarantee. So this is completely controlled by the saver. And then uh, you can put this money or you can make this, depending on how you save, become as taxable or as tax-free as you want. I've already learned a lot. I <laughs> so, um, so I guess I really shouldn't just wait for Social Security and live on that. Uh, Especially well, if I want to golf until I'm 80. <laughs> well, I think Social Security. Social Security is such an important uh, program. It, it's it's going to be around, mm -hmm. but it's going to be means tested. So I know your politicians won't, won't say use those words, and probably a lot of your viewers may not even know what means testing is, but we're already means testing Medicare premiums. Depending on your income, you pay a higher Medicare premium than everybody else. So it's an easy step to take that same schedule that now applies to Medicare premiums and apply it to Social Security benefits. If you have so much other income, your benefits are going to cut back or com be completely eliminated. And so then it becomes a program that is there to do what originally was intended, which was to address poverty for and senior citizens, not become a retirement program for the masses. So every year now when I get the letter that tells me how much I'm going to be worth in Social Security at right. retirement, <laughs> I, uh, I sh it might not be, even be the case. I would count on it until it's changed. Until, until it's uh, until changed. It's changed. Okay. And I would concentrate on building this new three-legged okay. stool, following the strategies in this book, because means testing is based on taxable income. That's what Medicare premiums are. And if it follows the same path as I think that it will, this book will help you keep your Social Security and not have it means tested away. Well, it's oh funny goodness. you're advocating the same thing Ross Perot advocated in, uh, uh, goodness, 1992, wasn't it? 1992. 
uh, when he ran for president, the means testing of Social Security. Uh, I don't, I, I'm not advocating for it. Yeah. I'm no. just saying that it's going to happen. Just speaking of it. Because there's many ways to fix Social Security, and I've read just about every one of them, but which ones are going to get passed, which ones are going to be the more uh, political via, politically viable ones. And while I totally disagree with means testing because that was not the way it's been presented, it's been presented as it's your money. Right. Well, it's not my money if you can take it away from me. So it really was your money. Well, in, in, a, in a minute or so, could you tell us what are the ways that individuals can try to maximize their Social Security uh, uh, payment as they prepare for retirement? Well, Social Security payments, uh, I think maximizing those are based on a couple of things. Uh, one being your age at, at which you retire. And this becomes, uh, comes down to your health. So the healthier you are, if you're going to live longer, then it benefits you to wait as long as possible to start drawing Social Security, and the maximum age is age 70. The other thing that's important, uh, especially for people who may have left the workforce at some point uh, and then returned to it, is that Social Security takes your highest 35 years of earnings and averages those. And so if you only have 30 years of earnings, you've got five zero years in there, and you want to try to replace those. So for somebody who doesn't have a complete 35 years, replacing those zeros makes a big difference. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. <laughs> I'm looking forward to reading the book. <laughs> we sh should have read this book uh, some time ago. Uh, are we out of time? I, we, I think we have to make sure everybody gets this book. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Okay, well, Rick, we want to thank okay. you very much for being with us today. Thanks for having me back. Let's ask one last question. Where can we get this book? This book is easiest place to find it is on Amazon. Don't okay. retire, uh, don't retire broke. Okay. Or it has its own website that you can go to. It's RogersSpeaks.com, and it's Rogers with a D, R O D G E R S. Okay, great. Rick, I'll be spending evenings yes. with you for a while. <laughs> okay. Thanks for my, very much thank for you. being with us. You're welcome. Tune in again next week for a new edition of Behind the Headlines. We'll see you then. <laughs>